Hey math fans, Jason Marshall here with a solution to the brain teaser problem from Math Dude episode 14, all about mathematical sequences. In that episode, we talked about some general properties of sequences, and then we finished off by talking about a particular type of sequence called an arithmetic sequence. That's a sequence where each element differs from the previous one by the same constant value. For example, each of the even and odd positive integers differs by the previous integer in the sequence by 2. At the end of the episode, I asked if you could think of a more efficient way to fully define an arithmetic sequence other than simply writing out all its elements, like this. As an example, let's figure out a way to more succinctly write the arithmetic sequence 1, 5, 9, 13, 17. First, let's use the symbol a sub n to represent each element in the sequence. I know it might sound crazy, but stick with me. The n in a sub n indicates which element we're talking about. So, a sub 1 is the first element, a sub 2 is the second, and so on. Since the difference between successive elements in our sequence is 4, one way to represent all the elements is to write a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 4. So, to find the second element, just plug in n equals 2. a sub 2 equals a sub 1 plus 4, which is 1 plus 4, it's 5. It works. For the third element, n equals 3. a sub 3 equals a sub 2 plus 4, which is 5 plus 4, that equals 9. It works again. This is great, but can we write a formula to represent all arithmetic sequences? Absolutely. Here it is. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Here, d is the distance between elements. It was 4 in our example. So let's try it out. For n equals 1, a sub 1 equals a sub 1 plus 1 minus 1 times d. Well, that's just a sub 1 equals 1, so it works here. For n equals 2, a sub 2 equals a sub 1 plus d. That's 1 plus 4 equals 5. It works again. Let's skip to n equals 5. a sub 5 equals a sub 1 plus 4 times d, which is just 1 plus 16. That equals 17. So it always works. You don't need to memorize any of these formulas. That's not the point here. The point is things can be represented mathematically in many different ways. Sometimes one way is more convenient than another, and you should always feel free to play around with equations and numbers until you find the way that's most convenient for you. Okay, that's all for now. Until next time, this is Jason Marshall with this week's Math Dude Video Extra. Thanks for watching, math fans.